Welcome to convention floor here at the 2022 NBAA convention in Orlando, Florida. You know, everybody knows how dominant Garmin is in the small airplane market, but it's gained huge momentum in the business aviation world. Let's go find Garmin's Dave Brown. Booth, you know, Dave, you and I have been doing this almost the same amount of time, which is a long <laughs> time, and we've seen the Garmin product line evolve from the first GPS 100. You know, I got thinking about older turboprops and older jets, and um, what are there for solutions if you've got an old turboprop that needs avionics? It's maybe it's a Conquest One, or maybe, um, you know, uh, maybe an old Piper or something. What does Garmin have for retrofit potential for these old airplanes? Oh, Larry, the solutions, you know, is endless. But it starts, you know, like everybody did with the 530-430. Now the heart of the panels, the GTN 750, whether you do dual 750, 650, that, that's the heart of the panel and where you start. And uh, here's a good example here, kind of our generic uh, uh, turboprop panel. This is probably more representing a King Air, but it could be a Cheyenne. It really doesn't matter. And, and we do everything as a building block solution, or you can do it all together. So again, as I mentioned, you start over here with the GTN 750, which I'm mostly familiar with. It's a GPS uh, multifunction display with a nav and a comm built into it. In this instance, we're uh, using it as remote transponder, remote audio panel also. Uh, it'll overlay the traffic and weather, whether you're doing from an active traffic system, from ADS-BN, same thing on weather. You can do data link weather overlay on it, uh, ADS-B or XM. You can actually put your active radar overlaid on the map or on a separate page with it. So true multifunction display, that's your starting point. If you're doing nothing else to the panel, you start there. But there's more. So. Then we come over, we got our primary flight display. So it's a 10 inch primary flight display. What we're doing in the turboprops is the uh, G600 TXI. That comes with synthetic vision. It uh, uh, really looks a lot like what you're used to seeing on all the times doing the G1000, the G3000, 5000. This is touch screen. And the neat thing with this too is you've got the ability to do a split screen mode. So it's another multifunction display here. It's always my favorite departure, always showing the uh, Aspen. So we're sitting at the end of runway 33 in Aspen. There's even our TAWS and our terrain coming out on the Lens 9 departure and how you fly a couple headings and that with it. So you can have it uh, split screen. And again, whatever you want it to be, we could bring up a traffic page. We can bring up terrain page. It just adds you know, more NFD capability or you strictly go back and go full screen and you got a full screen uh, primary flight display. Then the third thing you add is the Garmin Autopilot. If you go with the Garmin Autopilot, it makes this whole thing and system work just like we're integrated flight decks. So Larry, you've gone with the on uh, Scott on several demos in G1000 and how everything ties together uh, with the Autopilot. So like here, I've got a departure in here the Lens 9, if we look at this departure, it actually can just touch here and it gets us in the uh, flight plan. If we're taking off runway 33, you take off. Once we go, we fly heading 343 to 9,100 feet. Once you're at 9,100 feet, you do a left turn to 273 and you intercept the localizer outbound on it. Just like it would on a G1000, if you go to your autopilot and you're in nav mode right after takeoff, it's going to fly that whole procedure hands off. It's going to fly that heading leg to the other heading leg. This, uh, this works truly if you've got GTN, autopilot, and this just like our integrated flight decks, all the advantages with it. The autopilot's got the full envelope protection, so that means it won't overspeed, it won't underspeed, it'll push down before stall. Go arounds, it's fully coupled go arounds, just like we do in the G1000s now. You hit the go around on the throttle, command bars go up the autopilot before you always disconnect it on every autopilot, every turboprop out there. Now it's gonna stay coupled and you'll fly whatever that procedure is. Uh, it, it's actually awesome because again you can do everything at once you can do it in pieces you can do one side you don't have to do the other side but it really gives you the building block to it so and last but not least we've been adding more and more engines for our uh, engine displays with it on the is so we've got most of the Pratt's covered on it I think we're about a year out on getting the the G's or the uh, the Garrett engines for uh, some of your 441's that type of thing 
So right now, what we have uh, uh, certified is GTNs basically are on AML list, covers about any airframe you want in the Part 23 world. Same thing on the G600 TXI. It's gonna go, doesn't matter if you're going to a Cheyenne, a TBM, a Pilatus, that type of thing. Autopilot, we've really made inroads on the autopilot too, on what airframes we're covering. So right now, we've got it on the C90. We're gonna finish up the King Air 200 later on this year. We do the Conquest, the 441 and the 425. We've got the TBM covered. We've got the Caravan. Uh, and not to mention PC-12. That's been a very successful one with this. That PC-12s have also been extremely successful now with our engine instruments with it, just because the older displays are hard to find. Oh, and uh, not to forget too, we've got the Piper uh, family too of the Meridian family that we've got the autopilot, everything certified for. So pretty complete package on most airframes out there and uh, build it as you want.